everyone, welcome to the Rotor Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Monday, it's May 20th, it is 2024. We have an eight-game MLB slate to talk about here on today's podcast. I'm joined by my good buddy, Will Priester, Chief Justice 06. Chief, what's happening, my friend? Nothing much, brother. Let me take these glasses off. I forgot tonight. Glad to come on and do the slate with you. As I was discussing with you uh, pre-show, man, last week, we came in on a Monday with a 12-gamer. Then We followed that up with another 12-gamer, a 13 on Tuesday. Had another big one on Friday, and I was along for the ride on all of them. But this week, we cruise in with a pretty reasonable slate to open up the week. So I'm excited to come on and uh, just hang out with you, man, and, and talk through uh, some some Major League Baseball DFS, which is, you know, as I always say, one of my favorite sports to play DFS-wise. Yeah, I mean, this is this is slate is like so interesting. Um, this is one of those ones where it's like, all right, I could see a couple of these offenses going off, but I think that there's actually like some really decent pitching on this slate. So it'd be interesting to break it down and uh, talk about it. So let's get into it. Have some fun. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. As always, we're recording here on Sunday nights. What's up, YouTube chat? Uh, Will, eight games. Milwaukee at Miami is where we get started. Eight and a half total here. Milwaukee is a 136 favorite. Joe Ross, Ryan Weathers. Uh, We do have, so these are the 640 games. So there are a couple games here at 640. I guess we should make a note of that. Um, They didn't include like the 610 games. (laughs) So they did not. Uh, w- whatever. Um, like I'll take it. You're gonna. I know, <laughs> but it's just. It's like really. You're gonna. You're gonna do that, but you're not gonna do that anyway. So. Yeah. Um. Any interest here in Joe Ross against Miami? Oh man, I mean, I don't really want to, Stevie. But at 5800, he might just be okay. Like he might be able to squeeze his way to 15 points here. Um, Miami, not a team hit for incredible power and so i think you know for a guy that's going to attempt to keep the ball on the ground most of the game at 5800 like i if he got me 15 points i feel okay with that so i think i will have some some raw shares today so i think waka is the chalky oh yeah yeah, yeah. p2 like right in like they're basically the same price they're like 800 dollars difference so yeah um like I think that walk is going to be kind of popular and I think Ross is a fantastic pivot, right? Like we, we just continue to see like pitching. I don't know if you necessarily have to pay up for like two pitchers on any slate right now, because it just doesn't seem to be working out a lot this year. I think Joe Ross is like, if he can go out and give us somewhat close to what he did last time out. Um, I mean, 21 drafting points, five innings, really solid innings against Pittsburgh. Like, He's done a good job of limiting walks this year. He's not a huge strikeout guy, but he's done a great job limiting power. Um, and there's just not a lot of power in this lineup. I think that we're going to see a lot of ground balls <laughs> just in general here. So. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know. It's just interesting. That's all so, I'm yeah. I think overall, for me, I don't mind taking some shots here on Joe Ross. Uh, just it's a price thing, it's a good ballpark uh, upgrade for him going into Miami. Ryan Weathers on the other side of this game. Don't mess with my brew crew, Weathers. Um, any interest here in Weathers? Well, Stevie, I mean, I don't I don't really want to play Weathers. I mean, there's a few more strikeouts to left-handed pitching versus right-handed pitching. Like, but I still I I don't think this is the optimal play today. I'd much rather play Ross. So uh yeah, I, I'm not playing Weathers today. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I don't really love Weathers. He's been really good against lefties. I will say, like, if they do end up leaving, like, Yelich, Bowers, Terang, Freelick, like, all of the lefties in there, I think that's where you could potentially take some shots on Weathers. I just don't think they're going to do that. Like, I don't think at the end of the day, like, Jake Bowers plays today. Um, I, it's a great spot to give Yelich a day. Terang is a guy they like to sit against left-handed pitching. So, like, I just – I don't think this is a spot where we're going to see, like, a full-on lefty Brewers team. And we're going to get some of these uh, right-handed bats. So, let's talk about them here. Um, 
boy Joey Ortiz continues to hit. I know he had a really good game on um Friday. I think he had like three hits or something. It was a really, really solid outing. Um, so now that I'm back to being able to talk about him, he's gonna get back going here. He's 3,500. Really like him. They typically hit him up towards the top of the order against left-handed pitching. So if that happens, obviously he gets even more bump for me. Adamus against lefties always very much in play. Um, Contreras, I know he's expensive, oh, yeah. but this is a great spot for him. Um, what are your thoughts here on the Brewers? Yeah, um, I, I like them, and I see Brian mentioned Gary Sanchez. I think Gary Sanchez will play today. Um, so I'm at least that that's that's my read here. I think he plays today, Steve. So I, I wouldn't mind Gary Sanchez at 3,700. And uh, additionally, I mean, you know, Perkins is probably going to play, I would assume, um, since he's, you know, he's he's going to bat from the right side of the plate today. And then Churio probably plays too. So, I mean, you'll get some cheap pieces here against weather. So I, I think that's a, I think that's a really good spot for this team. Um, you know, I, Milwaukee's just been playing well, man. And I think it gets a, a, a suspect pitcher on a semi smaller slate than what we've been seeing. I think, I think we put him in there. Uh, any interest in the Miami bats here against Ross? Not really. Um, I mean, you can always play jazz, but I, I don't care about Miami, man. They're just – they're dreadful right now. Whether they win or lose, Stevie, this team is already done for the year. Yeah, I will say, like, I don't mind De La Cruz in this spot. He's been good against right-handed pitching this season. He just strikes out a lot. Joe Ross isn't a huge strikeout guy. He has some, like, reverse splits tendencies um, with his pitch mix. So, I think overall – um I don't hate the idea of maybe playing a little De La Cruz at 4,100. I don't think I want to play anybody else. Um, they have been hitting Otto Lopez towards the middle of the order, and he has some solid numbers against Ryan and pitching this season. So, like, if Otto Lopez cracks the lineup at 2,500, uh, he's someone you could potentially play here. Like, small sample size, but he's hit well. Um, 333 ISO, 423 Woba against right-handed pitching this season. So um, maybe take some shots on him. He's really cheap. Uh, Minnesota at Washington, eight and a half total in this game. Minnesota, 184 favorite. Pablo Lopez, Mitchell, Parker. Any interest here in Pablo Lopez? Steve, uh, I have some interest. It's just Washington's a fairly low strikeout team. Um, now that that's not saying Pablo won't come out and get the job done today. Um, you know, he's 9,500. I, I think he's just fine. Like, I don't think this is any, any leech spot for him. I personally think the seven and eight K range has maybe some better spots or much better spots than what he's going to have in terms of strikeouts. But I, I think he's a professional enough pitcher. He can probably still get you five. And if he limits the run damage, Steve, maybe he goes seven innings and still ekes his way to 20 to 25 fantasy points. I I think he's better than this Washington team as a whole. I just know the strikeouts may not be there as much as some of the other matchups. I I like him, don't love him. Yeah, I mean, you're not too concerned about, like, the power of the Minnesota team, but – I mean, they did get Joey Gallo back, so he's a strikeout or home run. That's an automatic two strikeouts. Yeah, but it's also the guy that could take you deep in any at-bat, too. (laughs) So, Um, Lopez is going to be kind of an ownership thing for me. I don't think he's necessarily a bad play in this spot. Um, I just kind of going to be looking at, like, the ownership uh, of these, like, top four or five guys and kind of deciding on how I want to approach them as far as um, getting exposure but I don't think Lopez is necessarily a bad play by any means. Yeah, because none of these top five guys are in like stellar spots today, and that's that's where I yeah. think it's going to get interesting for the ownership. No, I agree. And like the thing about Lopez too is like he's still an elite strike thrower. Like he has a four percent walk rate, twenty eight and a half percent strikeout rate. Like he's still an elite yeah. arm. Um, you know, so I don't I don't want to say that I don't like Lopez. I think he's definitely fine in this spot um any interest in mitchell parker on the other side of this game no 
Yeah, I don't have any interest in Parker either. Like he has really struggled this season so far. Um, nineteen and a half percent Ks, and I mean his hard hit rate is through the roof. Fifty two percent, fifty nine percent against righties. Um, yeah, I mean just really struggling. So he's not like getting like giving up a ton of like the long ball, but he's just not really dominating. He had like one good outing this year um, so far. So no interest for me in Parker. Any interest here in the Minnesota Bats? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, Stevie, you know, I've been, I've been saying this, man, and maybe, you know, maybe – Jeffers has just been fantastic. It's just no way to slice it, man. He's been fantastic. Power's been showing, especially against lefties. Like, if this might be a day he hits another home run. I, I like Jeffers here. Uh, he, he's actually at the top of my list in terms of uh, – you know, the Minnesota Bats. Carlos Correa continues to be cheap, Stevie, at 6K. And I know he's not. He hasn't been extremely productive since coming back, like a whole lot of single digits. But, you know, he went through a stretch in early May where he was cranking them out and multi-hits. And so at 4K, I think he's he's a, he's a really good play also. Um, and that's, you know, those are kind of my main two. If, if you decide to stack this team, you know, I always mention old man Carlos Santana at 3,700. You, you could do worse. Um, he should be playing. But Jeffers, by far, Stevie, is my favorite player off this team and, and absolutely a home run candidate. Yeah, I mean, overall, um, very interested in Jeffers. Cast, um, Castro, Carlos Santana is better from the right side of the plate than the left side. You know, you're obviously a little bit worried about like guys getting pinch hit for, but uh, I mean, it's really hard. I, like Castro's a switch hitter, Santana's a switch hitter, Jeffers, if he's catching, they're not going to take him out of the game. Yeah. Um, it's some of these guys that like are going to potentially get pinch hit for. Like, if I don't even know if Austin Martin's even with the big league club anymore, um, I'm not up on my Minnesota, like, but you know, if he's in there, yeah, he just got option down. So, uh, with Buxton back. I mean, even even Buxton, right? Like, so I think that there's enough right-handed power in this lineup to definitely attack Parker. And like I, like I said, when we were breaking down Parker, he gives up a lot of hard contact to righties. So I think that's kind of what I'm attacking here is like home runs, mini stacks, one-off home run power, that kind of thing here for Minnesota. Yep. Uh, going to the other side, any interest here in picking on Pablo Lopez with any of these Washington bets? Not at all. Uh, don't want to pick on Pablo Lopez today. I, you know, look, Washington, I understand they got a couple guys, but, I, you know, I really respect Pablo Lopez. And really, Stevie, I feel like Pablo Lopez has been on, like, this gradual ascension, right? Like, he was good, pretty good, and now I feel like he's a really good pitcher. So I, I don't want to pick on Pablo. Yeah, some of the cheap, like, stolen base upside guys have gotten price increases, like, if anything, Joey Gallo at 3,500, just hoping for that, like, two home run game um, more than anything else. But um, C.J. Abrams, always, like, a shortstop you can pay up for. It's just, like, are you playing C.J. Abrams over Mookie Betts today against Ciccone? Today. No. <laughs> I mean, better not. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of where I'm at. So, I mean, if you play 150 teams, you're probably going to get a little bit of exposure to Abrams for sure. Um Moving on. We got Boston at Tampa Bay. I feel like we just had this matchup in this We did game. just and have this two, matchup. Yeah, like, yep, we just we talked did, about these two have. guys like facing yep. each other, too. So, um, Boston at Tampa, seven and a half total. Pick'em game. Houch against Bradley. Um, these two guys, didn't they face each other, too? They Pretty did. Sure. Like, it was like the I'm exact matchup. It's just in, in Tampa instead of Boston now. Yeah, they um, did. Yeah, I mean, let's go to uh, Tanner Houch first. Any interest in him in this spot? So, Stevie, Stevie I think I'm going to play him. I think I'm going to play some of both of these guys, but I'm not thrilled about it because I'm on team, if you're not, like, a legit ace, I don't like playing pitchers back-to-back against the same team. But, I mean, they're in Tampa Bay, so I do feel like that's working in their favor. Don't get me wrong. So that that gives me a little bit of encouragement. But I always assume the strikeouts are going to come down a little bit, seeing them this close. So if I got a guy penciled in what would have been six, I'm probably going to pencil him in for like four. You know what I'm like? That's just kind of how I process it in a general sense. And that doesn't mean it's always going to work out. Because, I mean, we just saw schemes mow down the Cubs in back-to-back starts. 
totally different type of pitcher, though, I think. And so I I know I'm clumping these guys together. I am going to play them, but if they both flop, I'm not going to be surprised one bit. Yeah, I mean, I have a, like, very strict rule when it comes to this. Like, I don't typically play a lot of pitchers back-to-back, but yeah. on this – like on this slate, like I think they're both still very fairly priced. Neither one of these offenses are like super scary and yeah. it's a great pitcher's ballpark. Um, so I mean, I, I, I don't want to stack either one of these teams. Like, yeah, I mean, the good. hitters in the spot. So like for me, Houch, he's had, he's off to a really solid start. Um, he had one like bad inning in that outing last time out. He struggled with walks. Was it the was it the first inning? I feel like it was the first inning. Yeah, he gave he up on track. Pretty sure he gave up um, two runs in the first, and then kind of bounced back. But I could be wrong. Yeah. But and completed six innings too. So I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I'm interested, right? Like Bradley was my favorite pitcher on that slate. I remember like very clearly, like Bradley was my highest stone pitcher on that slate, and like now he gets a ballpark upgrade. There's strikeouts. Um, it's just, again, I hate it, man. I really hate playing pitchers against the same team. They just faced five days ago. Like, yeah, I, I talked about it in depth. I think last week or the week before, but like as a former pitcher, like you're trying to fool the hitter their first time through the lineup with like what you're going to attack them first pitch. And you can sometimes fool like second time through, but like once you get to the third time through the lineup, that's why we see pitchers like outside of like elite pitchers, elite pitchers. It's a huge difference. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall it's really tough that third time through. I mean, there's just so much you can do. They've, they've seen most of your pitches, if not all your pitches by that point. And now like five days later, it's like, all right, I remember what this guy did to me the first at bat. I remember what the guy did to me the second at bat. Like, I mean, there's detailed reports too, but it's like, I just saw this guy. Like now I have to completely change how I pitch and try to keep these guys off balance when they just saw me. And I mean, that's why it doesn't work typically uh, or it doesn't work as well unless you're like in the lead arm. So um, Boston bats. But yeah, again, Gerg, we just said that he's not, he's not a normal pitcher. The dude is elite. Like he is the top prospect in baseball. Like he is, he is an elite arm that we're going to talk about for the next, bro. Like yeah, we're going to talk like about him for the next ten years. Like I mean, it's that's a huge difference than Taj Bradley and Tanner Houch. So, but we like these guys because the matchups are good. You know, yeah. like it, it's good matchups. Um, Boston bats. Any interest in the Boston bats here? No, I feel like like we said, like if if these guys hadn't seen each other. Five days ago, like we wouldn't even be talking about these offenses. We'd just be talking about the pitching. So I, I, I'm going to stay away. I, I still don't think either one of these guys gets like blown up. Yeah, I mean, Abreu's 4K. He, he's off to a really, really strong start this season. They like, I mean, they like hitting him second. So if he's up there hitting second, I don't mind him. Devers is 5K. I don't mind him. Uh, those would be my two main targets here. Duran's off to a really strong start. Um, O'Neal's off to a really strong start. But, like, O'Neal strikes out so much against righty-righty matchups. And so, um, gosh, I wish I wasn't, like, I wish I was in town more this week. I'd totally go to a Tampa game. Um, Any interest here in the Tampa Bats? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just, I'm not thrilled about either of these teams. So I, I'm fine even on this small slate fading, and we've got some offenses that we can utilize. Yeah, I mean, Tanner Houch has a 50 ISO and a 247 Woba. He generates 56% ground balls. He's just not a guy you typically want to stack against. Um, like, if he could get his walks under control, I, I think he's allowed one home run this season. I'm pretty sure that's um, what I remember reading. But, like, through, I think, through nine starts, eight starts, um, he's allowed one home run. So... He's not typically a guy you want to pick bats against, especially in this ballpark. Seattle at New York. Yankees, that is. Seven and a half total in this one. Yankees are 132 favorite. We got Logan Gilbert against Marcus Stroman. Let's start with Logan Gilbert. Um, Was bouncing back. Like, he was pitching really well against Kansas City last time out and then just absolutely got hammered the last inning he was out there. 
Uh, he was cruising, and then he had a bruising. Ha! <laughs> Dad joke. Um, <laughs> any interest here in Logan Gilbert? Some people will get that. Uh, some yeah. people that have kids will understand that. I'm just saying. Um, I, I'm still okay with Logan Gilbert, man. On this slate, Stevie, I do think, you know, I, I'm going to have some spread out ownership today a lot more than I would like. Um, the Yankees don't have nearly as many strikeouts as last season. Um, but this is still a guy that I think can go out and get you a quality start. And if he's on, you can pick up enough strikeouts. So I'm, I'm okay with Gilbert here. No, there's a song like that kids do in like choir and stuff. It's like cruising for a bruise. Like I forget how the song goes, but yeah, there's a song. Um, there you go, YouTube. Um, so my issue with Logan Gilbert is the Yankees are just not striking out as much. You kind of just alluded yeah. to it. Um, the one thing that I will say, like Logan Gilbert has been elite against lefties this year. He's striking out lefties at a 34% clip, 16% swinging strikes, 34 and a half percent like, um, whiff rate against left-handed hitters. So that's really good when you're expecting like Rizzo, Verdugo, um, Soto, some of the lower strikeout guys are lefties. And then like you get the bump for like Stanton, who's a righty Torres is a strikeout righty. I don't know if John Birdie is going to be the everyday guy or not, but like that's more strikeouts as well. So I, it's kind of like a flip, like a, it's a mixed thoughts on Gilbert. If he's low owned because he's facing the Yankees in the Yankee stadium, I don't mind taking shots on him, but if he's going to get some steam today, I'll probably pass. Uh, Stroman last time out, really good start against Minnesota. I remember cause I stacked against him. Um, any interest here going up against the dreadful Seattle Mariners? I can't in good conscience tell anyone to face Stroman today, Stevie. I think, you know, once again, he could get knocked around a little bit, but where he picked up two strikeouts against Minnesota, he very well may pick up six against Seattle. I literally just saw Corbin Burns just, I mean, and look, this guy's in Corbin Burns. You could be wrong. But if I'm not mistaken, I think Corbin Burns had 11, 12 strikeouts against this team. He had 11, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a, 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 a massacre. And so, I think Marcus Stroman, I'm going to give him four to five, Stevie, like what I feel like is a reasonable expectation for where he is in his career and what type of pitcher he is. And if he can limit the runs, I, I think he has a good night tonight at 8,300. I am in uh, with Marcus Stroman. Yeah, I, I lied. Burn strikeouts to 10. Um, so that was nice. Like I, I, did, I wasn't even playing, and I just saw that Burns was facing Seattle. Um, and did the old fashioned, yeah. I'm, I'm playing, I'm getting some exposure to that bet kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, Stroman 8300 is such a it's like a tough price tag to swallow for a guy that I've stacked against so many times this year. Um, like he he's just been dreadful uh, against lefties this year, like 16% walks, 16% strikeouts, 280 ISO, 395 Woba. He does a great job ground like generating ground balls. So, like, on non Strowman teams, I'll definitely have a little exposure to the bats, and we'll talk about them in just a second. Um, oh, I guess we could, we already talked about Gilbert. So, let's talk about those bats for Seattle. Uh, Josh Rojas, really good against lefties this year. This ballpark's a huge upgrade for Seattle going into Yankee Stadium. Luke Rowley, uh, Ken Zone. Like, I don't mind, like, Cal Riley, like, taking some power bats, power lefties, not the righties, power lefties against Stroman in Yankee Stadium with Stroman struggles to lefties this year. I think that huge ballpark upgrade, and I don't mind having a little exposure to the Seattle lefties, especially because I think Stroman's going to get some ownership, and I think he should. I mean, this team is just – they're striking out at a huge, huge clip right now. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, it, it's kind of like I said, like, I think he either strikes somebody that keeps the ball on the ground, Stevie, or he, he could give up a couple. I'm with you. And I'm with you on some of these lefties. Like he, this has not been Stroman's brightest season, and so you probably want to get you some exposure to Kyle Riley, who's one of the, the higher ISO bats in this lineup. Um, I mean, and, and and we can't say enough about Josh Rojas and how good he's been. Also, um, but generally speaking, I'm not. I don't think I'll stack Seattle. I think I have him as a mini stack or complimentary, but that's about it for me. Uh, any interest in the Yankees uh, against Gilbert in this one? 
Uh, I mean, my boy Juan Soto is a guy I've just been playing, Stevie, just because I feel like, once again, fantasy points just tend to show up when he's there. But all in all, I, I don't plan on stacking the Yankees. I, I, I think Gilbert's got enough raw talent to limit this team if he can uh, if he can pitch well. Yeah, splitter, man. Um, really making lefties whip this year yeah. with the splitter. Yeah, I mean, I always feel like the Yankees are a team that, like, you never want to say don't play them because I mean the the top five or six hitters in this lineup are all really good hitters. Um, I just don't know if this is the spot I want to play the Yankees. And I know we keep saying that I really do feel like this slate is interesting because there's like the Dodgers. Like I just want to play the Dodgers. Like how do I play the Dodgers today? Um, so I mean I think the Dodgers are going to be very popular but i think it's very clear that they're the top stack on the slate let's talk about this next game though because i think this one's interesting too we got detroit at kansas city nine total pick em game reese olsen michael waka facing off against each other hey reese olsen has not been bad this year like no. as, like he is pitched quite well um like to start the season do you have any interest in him against kansas city in this one stevie it's weird but I think I'm going to play him like I think in terms of skills. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. He's a, no, I was going to say he's a 36 ISO this season. Like he has yeah. just been phenomenal. No he, hasn't allowed, given up. he hasn't allowed a one home run yet this year. I know. Like no home runs. It's just yeah. wild. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you know, we were talking about, and that's why I was saying this slate was so tricky because. Like, I feel like I'm going to be out on some of the higher end guys. We'll talk about it because that's coming up. But that's why I was saying, Steve, kind of below this 8K range feels like the sweet spot of the slate to be in. And I think, you know, I, I think Reese Olsen is fine. We've got a really good bump down on him. I'm not playing Reed Detmers today for what it's worth, even though we haven't talked about him. So, I mean, you're getting Olsen and Waka in the same game it's just i just think the 8k range and kind of below is kind of the sweet spot of the slate. i think that's where the money is made yeah i mean it's really really impressive what reese olsen's doing and like i was looking through some of the data for him and like it's just incredible like zero home runs um you know you kind of expect the home run to put five ball to kind of bounce like he's gonna eventually give up home runs i'm not saying that he won't but like what he's doing this year is phenomenal. Um, you know, if you pull up baseball savant and you look at some of the stuff that he's been able to do and like where he's at with some of this stuff, like it's just phenomenal. So he's a young pitcher. You know, we haven't seen him. What is he? 23, 24 years old. Um, we haven't seen him a lot, but like so far, man, this is, this is a guy that very quietly, really good. He reminds me a lot like Kyle Hendricks before Kyle Hendricks got bad. Like Kyle Hendricks, like early years, Kyle Hendricks, like, you know, even reminds me a little bit of like a, a Max Freed when he's not walking people. Like his control is not as good as Max Freed, but like just generating ground balls, generating soft contact. Like, yeah, it's interesting because he's he's in this price range where it's like, all right, do I just do I pay down a little bit for like a Ross or something um, or a walk on the other side? And like, I don't think Reese Olsen's going to get a ton of ownership. and. Everyone knows I absolutely love playing um, Kansas City bats, but it's it's tough not to have some interest here in what Reese Olsen's doing, at least to make a note of it, um, what he's doing. Other side of this game, we got Michael Waka. Waka hasn't been too bad this season either. Um, he's not a guy that hasn't allowed any home runs, but he's pitched really solid, coming off of a really dominant performance against Seattle, which, I mean, we all kind of like that because we all played him. Any interest here in Waka against Detroit? Uh, yeah, I, I have some interest in Walker as well, Stevie. Um, you know, Detroit strikeouts, as they were looking a lot better this season early on, Stevie, strikeouts are starting to return. You know, you look at this lineup against right-handed pitching, and uh, boy, oh boy, Stevie, they're bad. You know, Ivan is 23%. Connor's only at 22, but I mean, Riley Green, 27 Gio Urshela, limited plate appearances, 27.3. Wendell Perez, 25 limited plate appearances. But, like, the strikeouts are coming back. And, and if they're going to be strikeout opportunities and low power in the bottom half of this lineup, Stevie, 
um, which, you know, they did – well, that was against left-handed pitching. Against right-handed pitching, it's even worse. So I I, I think – I think Walker's once again in play, man. Like, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's just an ownership thing for me, especially coming off of that start. Um, the one thing that definitely concerns me with Waka is the same thing that always concerns me with Waka is like he tends to be more of a fly ball guy, um, especially to left handed hitters. So, you know, a guy like Riley Green, who's a massive ground ball hitter, um, definitely gets like a, a bump in this spot facing a, a fly ball guy. So, yeah, I mean, those are always the the concerning things with me with Waka. And, like, this lineup's really not as bad as it has been in years past, but there are plenty of strikeouts in this lineup. So, yeah, I mean, if Waka is chalky, I don't mind using, like, the leverage Detroit stack today. I don't know if I'd full stack them, but, like, a three-man or a four-man, I think is very much in play if Waka's getting um, chalky. Like, obviously, a lot of interest in, like, Riley Green, Perez, Carpenter, uh, those would be my three favorites, but I mean, why Michael Walker is still hittable. He's still very hittable. Um, so like if he is, if he is chalky, I don't mind it. I do like Walker. I'm just saying like, I think that, uh, you know, overall, I, I wouldn't mind taking some Detroit bats thoughts on the Tigers here. Um, it, anything I did with them would, would just be one off Stevie. Like I'm not, I'm not actively you know, trying to just load up here. But once again, you know, we, we, we go back to it. We talk about, you guys like Connors look good. You know, Riley Green, 242 ISO, 388 Woba. Uh, like, you know, uh, uh, Perez, if, if he's batting 228 ISO, 386. Like, so I don't, I don't mind those guys that are kind of doing some power hunting, but I don't want to load up and stack them. So, um, yeah, I mean, Derek said every social media man they have every angle of the NASCAR fight. Well, that's because Ricky Stenhouse Jr. couldn't leave the track and he was waiting for Kyle Bush at his hauler. Um, so everyone knew that was coming. Um, Tiger smash Waka on 428. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's baseball. Uh, any interest here in the Kansas City bets? Um, it would just be one off, Stevie, no, nothing more than that. Um, you know. But I, I'm not I'm not thrilled about stacking them by any stretch. Yeah, I mean this guy is not a lot of home run. Like this isn't the guy you want to stack against. Like yeah. I, I mean, yeah, there's there's stolen base upside. You can play Bobby Witt against anybody. I mean, he's just a guy he can get on base and steal. Um Kansas City is one of my favorite teams to play, just in general. Um, yeah. I just don't think today's that day. Like I think we're we gotta <laughs> give respect where respect is due with Reese Olsen and like looking at like how well he's done limiting power and everything. Like I think you probably want to stay away from stacking against Reese Olsen for right now. And he does give up a lot of hard contact just on the ground. Um, he doesn't get barreled very much. Like he has, you know, with pitches, he has pitches to get out of jams. So just not a guy that I want to want to stack against. All right. Probably the most interesting game on the slate, Baltimore at St. Louis, eight total St. Louis, a slight favorite. Kramer and Gray. Um, any interest here in Kramer going up against St. Louis? I've got some, Stevie. That's the thing. I hate having interest in this many pitchers. Steve. I, like, I hate yeah, it. It's just one of those slates. It yeah. really is. Yeah. But, I mean, this might not be a slate where like a stack takes down a slate. Like, well, I mean, the Dodgers maybe, but yeah, maybe Houston. We'll talk about them too. Yeah. But yeah, I do like Kramer. Um, you know, at 7700 I think the price is really fair. I think there is some strikeout upside. Um, and then I think there's a, an ability for him to, you know, get three innings. I think he could, you know, he could get the six innings if he pitches fairly clean. And Stevie, I also think he could get the 20 or more fantasy points if he gets the six. So I, uh, you know, I, I like Kramer at 7700 You know, if he's 8700 I, I X him out today at 77 I think he's got to stay in the pool. Yeah, I mean, Cardinals have definitely been hitting a little bit better over the last week or so. Um, for the price, I think he's just a, a stellar play today. Um, yeah. I, again, I've already said it. Dodgers, by far, my favorite team on the stack today. Like, favorite stack on the slate, by far. Not even close. Not even remotely close. Um, so, 
when I'm trying to stack the Dodgers and trying to get bets in Otani and Freeman, I'm going to have to play cheaper pitching. So Kramer, definitely a pitcher that I don't mind paying down for. He's been pitching great recently, and I think this is a great spot for him. Sonny Gray, 10K, going up against one of the best offenses in baseball. There is not many weak spots in this lineup. Um, I, I like Sonny Gray normally, and I think you can play elite pitchers against any kind of offense, but Baltimore is getting into that range where I might just stay away from pitching against this team. Yeah, I, and that's kind of how I'm feeling, Stevie. Like with Gray here at 10K, look, man, it would not shock me if Gray came out and put together a 10 strikeout performance. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't know if Sonny Gray beats me today. And so as a result at 10K, I think I'm going to fade, Stevie. And I, I don't feel great about it. But once again, I just think there's enough between these eight, seven, 6K guys that we could get there and be just fine. So no need for me to spend up and waste all that salary. I can get some extra bats. And that's not really? me saying Gray is bad. That's not what this is about. It's really more of I think I can get equal production for cheaper today. So let, let's flip that, right? If Sonny Gray is under 10% in tournaments today, do we take shots okay. on him? Like, okay. He, he's one of a few arms that can go for 30-plus fantasy points. Strikeout rate's 32%. His walk rate's under 5%. He's generating a ton of whiffs outside the strike zone, too. Like, I mean, if you tell me less than 10% on, then I play him. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, that's where, like, in a 150 build, if you see Sonny Gray under 10%, you're like, oh, man, I'll play, like, 11%, 12%. I'll get slightly over the field on Sonny Gray. He's just too good not to, right? Um, in a 20-inch or max, 3-inch or max kind of stuff, I don't know how much Sonny Gray you'd play even, like, in the ownership game. Um, but, like, if you're playing 150 today, I feel like that's where you kind of have to say, hey, you know, Sonny Gray is probably too good not to have some exposure, but... We should also look at some of the matchups he's had this year. Like he's had, he's had some good matchups to start the year. He beat up on my my Brewers the first time, but they crushed him the second time. Um, they are my Brewers now. I've claimed stake in. I I might actually be a Brewers fan. This team is fun to watch, man. They're so fun to watch. Uh, bats. Any interest in the Baltimore Bats? No. I mean, just just one off, but like nothing nothing crazy. Like I play Rutschman. I play Henderson, Henderson as a one-off, maybe Westberg, but like I'm not, I'm not stacking this team at all. See, I think that's where I'm opposite. Like if I was going to play Baltimore, I'd stack them. I'd say, you know, I'm just going to play the talent of this team with a with um Henderson and then like you mentioned, Rutschman, O'Hearn, Mountcastle. Like I'm just going to, you know, so they're going to get to Sunny Gray today, and then I'm going to get the St. Louis bullpen, and then I'm going to win. Um, they're going to be very low owned. They're very expensive. I think that's where I would play them or how I would play them. St. Louis bats, any interest in the Cardinals here against Kramer? Not really. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, it's one of those days. I know. Like, oh, man, I almost wish that, like, DraftKings and FanDuel today was like, hey, it's a smaller slate and, like, more work for us, but. Like, give us the, the, I mean, give us the Braves against Vasquez in the doubleheader or something. I, I know why they didn't do it. It's just like, oh, oh anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't have a ton of interest in the Cardinals. I really like Kramer. Um, I mean, where Kramer struggles is, like, power lefties. So, like, if you wanted to take a shot on, like, Matt Carpenter, Newpar, Burleson, Donovan, any of those guys, sure. But, I mean, that that's it for me. All right, we got LA Angels at Houston, eight and a half total. Astros, a 205 favorite. We got Detmers against Valdez. Uh, any interest here in Detmers? Detmers? Sorry. No. We have way too many pitching options for me to have interest in him today. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like not even sugarcoating it. There are way too many options today to even think about playing this guy. So. Um, if he scores like 25, 30, so be it. But overall, if he does, um, that means my Houston stacks have failed big time. Yeah, we're going to talk about those bats. Uh, any interest in <laughs> Valdez on the other side? Oh, here? man. See, 
Dude, he had that really classic like Valdez game last time out. 13 ground balls, one fly ball, eight strikeouts, seven innings. Like that is a Valdez game. Um I'm just saying. Just saying. I know. I just Oh man, it's just too many pitching options today. So Steve, let me say this. By the time this slate comes around tomorrow, some of the guys that I liked aren't probably going to be in my pool. I think Valdez is fine. As of right now, I think I play him. By tomorrow morning, tomorrow mid-afternoon, I don't know if I play him. I think I will, but I'm not sure. I just I I can't I can't play like 15 pitchers. I just can't. <laughs> so I as of right now, he's in though. As of right now, he is in. Yeah, I think I think Yeezy has a good question in chat. Do we prefer um Strowman over Valdez today. Oh man, I, I I think I take Strowman, man. Seattle, the strikeouts for Seattle, I think just they're they're too many. Like I know, I know the Angels are going to have some strikeouts too. Like don't get me wrong, but like Seattle is like another level of strikeout for them. Um. Why is Detmer or Det- Detmer so bad this year? I mean, his run value on his pitches are just awful. He's generating whiffs. Um, he's getting a little unlucky advanced stats wise. Like he should have some positive regression, but um, his pitches are just getting hit really hard. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is. His ex woba on his fastball is like three fifty. His hard hit rate on his fastball is like forty percent. So like, he's just getting hit hard. Um, and they're and it's falling in a lot. Like I said, I, I feel like. He's been a little unlucky, um, and like his XERA and stuff is way lower than his um, and like his CR and stuff. So he's just been a little unlucky. Like he's sitting at like a three thirty woba or a Babbitt, but I mean, let's let's hope he continues to get a little unlucky because um, love um, Houston here, and one of my favorite bats for Houston should be back in the lineup here today. Will Chaz McCormick back in tri- he was in AAA. And then overall, um, they said that he should be back up to the big league clean team here on Monday. Great against lefties coming off the IL. Hopefully that red tag stays next to his name all day. I I mean, it's hard not to say that you like the, the Astros here. I mean, this is a, just one of the offenses that you're going to play today. Oh, we got a mute over hit. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry to have won you guys your monies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bregman, 4,200. Bregman's been hitting better as of recently. We had a Jordan signing today, Stevie. Everybody thought the world was falling. They're like, oh, my God, Jordan's terrible. He's not, well, don't worry, folks. He can still hit a baseball. And uh, so so he's been good. You know, one of my favorite guys, uh, one of my favorite cheaper guys in this team, one not as cheap anymore, but Jeremy Pena. It's been a guy that I've uh, that I've liked a bunch, and so you know he's a guy that I want 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 to play for sure. Uh, Yanier Diaz, and the, like it's just I like these guys, man. So I, I definitely Houston's a top stack today, hands down. Yeah, I mean they are like you know Bregman's wearing this magic um, headband now, and he's just hitting the ball hard again. So um, watch out, Alex Bregman hitting the ball hard again. Um, Overall, like it, it's just not a spot that I want to overthink, right? Like if we look at at Dietmers this season, his breaking ball run value is bottom seven percent. His fastball run value is twelve, let under the twelve percent mark, and his run value just as a pitcher this season is in like the nine percentile. Like he's just really, really bad, really, really bad this year. And like he's throwing more fastballs than he ever has, and his fastball is just getting crushed. I mean, it's just. Everything sets up for Houston in this spot. They're a great fastball hitting team. Um, they'll be pounding some gra- garbage lids today. And yeah, I mean, it's just a great spot. We finished it out. Arizona at LA, eight and a half total in this game. The Dodgers, a 225 favorite. We got Sacconi against Yamamoto. Um, we're not playing Sacconi today. I mean, no. this is just, this is the fastest no. I'm making the no call for Will. We're not playing him today. 
don't do that. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do on any slate. And as Blender loves to say, you can play whoever you want. Don't let that be Sacconi. Really, really bad against lefties. Um, anyway, any interest here in Yamamoto? I think I play him just because he's good, Stevie. But I, I don't, I don't particularly. I don't know if I need Yamamoto today. Yeah, I mean, I have a ton of interest in him today. Like, I just, I like the projected, like, I don't think he's going to be popular. That's the reason that I have a lot of interest in him today. We've talked about 15 pitchers on a eight-game slate that we like today, it feels like, but I know it's not that many. I'm just being sarcastic. Um, but I just kind of hope Yamamoto goes under own. He's a 27.5% K rate. His walk rate's under 5%. Doing a great job limiting power to the left side of the plate, which you're definitely worried about here with jock and carol and those guys and you know he's he's been really dominant against righties like advanced stats wise so i think like if you want to make a dodgers or houston stack different play yamamoto i think like people are going to play yamamoto today when they're like stacking like milwaukee or something minnesota like those types of teams and i think like if you want to make your dodgers or houston stack different Try to plug it in with Yamamoto. I mean, we have plenty of cheap pitching. We have some cheap bats that, you know, that we talked about as we were going through these games. So I like him today. I think he has a lot of upside. I know, like, it, it's been a hit rocky season where it's up or down, up or down. Um, we just hope that he has a ceiling game. Like, we don't care about these average games. He's going to have them. You hope to get a ceiling game. I don't think he's going to be popular like Yamamoto here today. Arizona has not been as good this year, just overall. Um, one of the best offenses in baseball last year against right handed pitching. We we loved them last year. They just haven't been as good this year. Any yeah. interest in the Arizona bats? No, not against Yamamoto. I don't care about what happened against San Francisco. Yeah, I don't have an interest either. Um I, the Dodgers are the top stack. It's not even close for me. Like, it is not even remotely close. I know I already said that. I'm going to say it again. Slade Ciccone, just not a good pitcher so far. Flyball guy that doesn't miss bats. If you're a flyball guy that doesn't miss bats against the Dodgers, you're going to get beat up. Like, it is just not a good spot for you. Love, 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 love the Dodgers today. Yeah, absolutely, man. And the thing about it, Stevie, you know, I've mentioned this before. I think at the beginning of the season, they were striking out quite a good bit, but everything's starting to come down, Stevie. And now this team has, I mean, we have liftoff and board doesn't look good. I, I was checking the standings the other day and realized I, I think the Dodgers, I don't know, were like 30 and 12 or 30 and 20 or 30 and 50. It was something crazy. And I was like, ooh, I mean, it, uh, that money's paying off, Stevie. They are, uh, they're definitely winning a lot of baseball games, and I'm hoping my Braves can follow suit and, and make a dent here. Because look, if they don't soon turn this thing around, Philly's going to run away with it. Uh, but I, I, the Dodgers, they're just a full stack, man. Whatever team they run out, play everybody, play everybody, and uh, I think you'll be fine. All right, let's play the morning grind game. I feel like we breezed through those games, and it was 50 minutes long. I felt like we were going so much faster than that. Have you ever have you ever been stung or bit by a horsefly? Like, do they sting or bite you? Have you ever been attacked by a horsefly before? Stevie, I don't know, but like we haven't had a read in a while, and we didn't discuss it. So the way he asked that question, I said, "Is this about to be a read that I didn't know about? Like, are we are getting, getting no. like some mosquito <laughs> bite ointment cream or something?" Was- no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was playing disc golf this morning, and um. I got bit by a horsefly on my elbow. And my whole elbow is swollen. So, like, I am coming back from an elbow injury anyway from disc golf. And, like, now it's, like, the outside of my, like, elbow hurts. And it's just, like, it's so awkward feeling. Um, and I've had a lot of, like, elbow issues in my life and a lot of arm issues in my life just in general. I'm very good at, like, knowing when I'm hurt and when I'm not hurt. And, like, it's, it's it's in a weird spot like because i know like the muscle tendons in your arm and like in your elbow and stuff and it's like those don't hurt but like my elbow hurts and it's just so funky and it's my right arm so anytime i go to like move my mouse it feels so weird and i just had to get it out there um horse fly is not fun not fun um there you go and 
C for Kami, he says, yeah, here in Tennessee, they will hunt you. Isn't it true? Like, if you get bit by a horsefly or you kill a horsefly, like, on you, don't doesn't it attract more horseflies? Um, I started throwing curveballs when I was 12, and I never snapped my wrist until I was, like, 14. I threw knuckle curves when I was younger. There you go. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Um, don't even get me started on pitching curveballs at a young age. If you're snapping your wrist or you're teaching your kids to snap a wrist, awful. All right, Will. Um, under 8K to get six or more strikeouts. We have options today. There are Ooh. plenty of options today. Who do you got? Um, I think I'm just going to go walk and, and go chalky today. Walk a, I'm going to go Kramer. Um, yep, those that was my other choice. <laughs> Yeah, I do think they can communicate with each other. I could be wrong. And like Derek said, you can get those pens from the pharmacy. I have um, you ever see those like um, mosquito like sucker things that you like put on your arm when you get bit by something and like suck it? Like I I keep one of those in my disc golf bag. So it probably would, would have been worse if I didn't do that. Over eight K to score under fifteen. I'm getting derailed. I'm sorry. I get distracted. Um, who do you got for us today, Will? Who's who's busting at the top? Oh man, I I don't really like any of these guys under, but give as crazy as it sounds, give me Strowman. I feel like he's most likely to get blown up out of that group. Yeah, I I'm gonna kind of go a little off the board here today and go Logan Gilbert. Um, it's in Yankee Stadium. Stops. Yeah, it's in Yankee <laughs> Stadium, and like they strike out a lot less this year. They have plenty of power throughout the lineup. So, like, if you are struggling to strike them out, a couple big hits, you can get under 15. So, process of elimination on like pitchers that I like today, and I just don't know if I'm gonna play a lot of Gilbert. Over 4K to go yard. Who's leaving the ballpark today? People should know who this is. Steve is one of my favorite bats on the slate. Give me Ryan Jeffers. <laughs> Versus old Mr. Mitchell at 4,800. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind that at all. Um, yeah, I don't hate that at all. I, gosh, I feel like home run picks today for me are a little tougher. I'm trying not to go Dodgers. Well, let me just start by saying I'm trying not to go Dodgers. Um, gosh, I hate the idea of like, Paying up for Contreras, but man, he has been so good this year. Give me Contreras to go yard. I might, I might try to find like a cheap first baseman and second baseman or something today to play a lot of Contreras. So give me Contreras. Under 4K to get two hits. Who is a cheap bat that you like today? Uh, give me Gary Sanchez. I, I think he plays today. Like him a ton. He's in all the over the catchers, huh? Yeah, love love him today, man. Catch have actually been pretty good all year. Like, so yeah. I'm gonna go to my boy Joey Ortiz. You already knew that it was coming. Um, yeah, I mean, just absolutely crushing. Weathers is not a guy you're typically worried about. So give me Joey Ortiz. Stack to score six or more runs. Who's getting the job done today? Mm, I think we got a lot of options here, Stevie. Uh, I'm going to go to the back of the board here. Uh, give me the Houston Astros. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm with you. Um, sure. Sounds great. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I I mean, if I was not going to, if I'm not going to say like Dodgers or Astros, I don't know. Like, I have a weird feeling that Detroit's just going to be really good today. I have a weird feeling that Detroit's going to be good today. Uh, so give me the Tigers to score six or more runs today. They'll probably score like two, and I'll probably look silly, but that's okay. Um, I always look silly. I don't care. Anyway, uh, any pick em plays or player props that you like here? Um, I was kind of trying to trying to go through that steve and see if we had any strikeout props and uh i have one that's really interesting and i'm interested to get your takes on it marcus stroman's not a huge strikeout guy 
He's facing Seattle, a huge strike. They gave him team. five and a half. Five and a half at plus money. I take it. I think I think the plus money is worth it. I mean, you can get it right now on DraftKings for plus one twenty. Um, I thought that one was super interesting. So um, yeah, it, it, he should be four and a half on a normal day, and they're giving him five and a half because everybody is caught on now that Seattle's like the best strikeout strike matchup yeah. in baseball. So I think I think I still take it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that one was really interesting. Joe Ross is, is interesting as well. It's like four and a half against the Marlins. Um, those are like two plus money um, strikeout props that I definitely don't mind. Like Joe Ross coming off a six strikeout game against Pittsburgh. Um, so I don't mind those two. Um, anything else you want to add, lines or anything like that? Yeah, Brewers minus 130 sticks out to me against Weathers. That, that feels like a good one. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't hate that. Um, you can get that on ESPN Bet. DraftKings has it. Bet Rivers has it. Bet365. So, um, if you're – yeah, I mean, if you're looking for any well, of those sites – I've got a spicy up. one too, Stevie, but it's not All It's right. not on the slate. This is the 3 o'clock game. Um, All right. So what's interesting about baseball tomorrow, Steve, is we're going to get games all day, believe it or not. 12, yeah, because 3. of the rainouts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I Secretly, I know this sounds crazy. I think the White Sox at plus money is, is, might be good today. But it's it's more about Eric Eric Fetty and, and less about their offense. But I, I think he might be able to limit the Blue Jays enough if the White Sox lefties can can put the ball in play a little bit, or righties against Barrios, I think it's a low scoring game, um, and I think you know, I, I I think I think the White Sox at plus money today is is interesting. I mean, the total is at seven and a half to eight most places. Like that's I, I like it. Yeah, and what else could say if you are new and you haven't like if you're in North Carolina or something, you haven't signed up for any of these sports books yet, and you're getting into sports betting and you want to jump on some of the stuff that we talk about, really easy just to go to rotorgrinders.com slash sports dash betting or at the top of the rotorgrinders page there's a sports book page and you can hit home and then you can get all the codes and those are gonna give you some good um good deals usually so check those out um and then mine today is dodgers minus one and a half um absolutely love the dodgers minus one and a half today again i think this is a very lopsided game sacconi i feel like he's gonna get crushed and um yeah i mean i think overall i think this is a great spot for the dodgers i get to i'm excited will i'm gonna be in charlotte for the coke 600 this weekend so like i haven't even checked out like espn bet and stuff and i'm excited to check some of that stuff out um, using the promo codes here, Rotor Grinders, when I'm up there um, in Charlotte this weekend. So can't wait for that. If you're going to the Charlotte race, if you're going to the Coke 600, make sure you say hi. I love meeting people. Um, I'll be there all weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's going to wrap it up here for Monday. We're back tomorrow talking baseball. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, and we'll see you again tomorrow.